Dallas, one of the tests that the Gemini 7 astronauts will be subjected to, but not the Gemini 6 astronauts, will be a, a stamina test. Each one uh, will be put on a piece of equipment that is something brand new to post-flight examination. It looks something like an exercycle on which the tension can be increased and therefore make the astronaut uh, exert a greater degree of energy. The space medicine people want to find out just what kind of shape uh, astronauts who have been in lengthy flight exercise cycle on which the tension can be increased and therefore make the astronaut uh, exert a greater degree of energy. The space medicine people want to find out just what kind of shape uh, astronauts who have been in lengthy flight are in when they conclude that flight uh, in case they have to do some work. Uh, we just have word from Flag Plot, and of course we both can see it. The spacecraft is 3,000 yards away from the carrier. We're turning a tight circle to bring it alongside our number three elevator. And the elevator crew, of course, is ready, waiting orders to drop the elevator to the hangar deck position from whence the recovery operation can begin. The aircraft still circling over that spot. Now there are only two helicopters uh, staying with the spacecraft. And one of the air bosses, we can't tell yet from this distance whether it's number one or two. But it's a bright, beautiful day. The spacecraft coming down so close to the bow of the USS Wasp uh, made it possible for astronaut Sharon Stafford to stay in the spacecraft. That's the way Shara wanted it. That's the way he wanted to come aboard. And, of course, that is the ideal way of recovery. There isn't any chance of risk to the astronauts being hauled aboard a helicopter hovering above. And, of course, there isn't any risk uh, to swamping the spacecraft uh, if the astronauts stay with it uh, while they're closed. There wasn't much risk of swamping today anyway. The Atlantic is bright and blue and few broken clouds overhead. The Gemini 6 spacecraft on its return from its historic rendezvous mission, riding easily in the sea that's running at no more than three to four feet of long running swells. Yes, Bernie, up here on the 07 level, we're out here at the very most forward part of it, and the uh, carrier is now turning. It's, it's turning to starboard, and the uh, spacecraft is in the water about 2,500 yards away. The carrier is now preparing to make its final approach. Still overhead are uh, Air Boss and Air Boss 2, and there are three helicopters. Number 57, with Dr. Carpentier aboard, has uh, been detached from the immediate scene and is flying around the spacecraft, around the uh, aircraft carrier, and the chances are it may be landing fairly soon. That's the one with uh, Dr. Carpentier, who might have jumped if he'd been needed through the water, but wasn't needed, so he didn't do it. He didn't have to get wet. Sometimes the doctors do, but... All in all, the, uh, the record of recovery of astronauts has been exceptionally, in fact, brilliantly good. They have uh, never needed any kind of immediate medical assistance once they're on the surface in the spacecraft. For WASP, Dallas, uh, this is uh, part of a record. Uh, it is the second space flight that she recovered in the Gemini series. The first one, the Gemini 4. And now, we, as we are coming up alongside the ship slowing in the water, uh, the number three elevator has gone into the down position and the handling crew for the lines and the boat and aircraft train uh, have come out from the hangar deck and they are manning the number three elevator in the down position. The spacecraft is now directly ahead of us and we're heading st straight, straight ahead at no more than, well, I'd say 10 knots, right mm -hmm. toward the spacecraft. What we see there, gentlemen, is the cradle that will take the uh, spacecraft when it comes Both back aboard. Hatches, by the way, are open now and one of the astronauts has his head sticking out. We don't know which one it is, but it could well be uh, Captain Shira, who is the command pilot. They motioned, of course, Dallas, uh, to the uh, swimmers, informed the swimmers, who then informed the helicopter that they would close the hatches as the ship came alongside. Yes, that's right. That's uh, to avoid any possibility of the spacecraft shipping water in those moments, those rather ticklish moments when they're attaching the lines uh, off the starboard side of the carrier. That giant boat and aircraft crane is being made ready. It's big hook uh, rising high top, towards the top of the block and uh, the light line hanging down from it, the line that will be fired over to the swimmers who will attach it. 
On that elevator, the Marines are standing ready along with sailors in tropical short sleeve white prepared to offer a guard of honor to the spacecraft as they come aboard. Some Marines in white hats uh, uh, nailing down a, a little sign that says, Welcome aboard, Wasp. And uh, the Gemini seat, the Gemini trailer is out in its position almost to the forward lip of the number three elevator and Chick Stuka, the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation man, uh, is there ready to bring his baby aboard. One of the first jobs he has, as you know, as soon as the astronauts get out, is to safe the spacecraft to make sure that some of the Ohm's fuel still left aboard is not inadvertently triggered. It's uh, highly poisonous and could be quite dangerous. Right up at the uh, bow of the uh, carrier, a considerable group of sailors in their tropical whites has gathered together with some of the flight deck personnel and the uh, gun bays on the starboard side are crowded with sailors also in tropical white watching as the carrier makes right now what seems to be a fairly rapid approach. It's still uh, one that involves a lot of uh, tricky sailing and seamanship on the part of Captain Hartley who is an expert at this sort of thing. Back to Bernie Eisman. Dallas it was making speed, the Wasp was, just a few minutes ago, but now it's slowing down very perceptibly. The yellow rafts of the swimmers easily visible just off the bow. Uh, the helicopters, three of them still hovering there, and the two twin-engine aircraft still flying their concentric circles at very low altitudes. Now the bow of the Wasp is drawing almost even with the spacecraft in the water. It's smoke flares, uh, the uh, smoke flares uh, that help identify it from the air, almost out of fuel, they're dying out. And up ahead you can see the green dye in the marker, and number 57 helicopter, the one that spotted it, uh, the first helicopter piloted by now Lieutenant Commander Jerry Perrigan, the helicopter that dropped its swim team into the water to attach the flotation collar. Uh, the swim team, led by Ensign Dennis Bowman, and the swim team still in the water, has come aboard, has been recovered by the carrier. Uh, that leaves now three helos uh, flying in position. The Wasp coming very perceptibly to a slower speed as the spacecraft and the two rafts with the swimmers are right on our bow. We're right on our bow. We can get a very good view of them now. Two rafts in the water. Uh, one swim team, of course, in the water to secure the radar and recovery section of the Gemini 6 spacecraft. And that they did. And now up ahead, we can see that the astronaut, Sharon Stafford, are securing the hatches on their Gemini 6 spacecraft. They had opened them uh, sometime after landing in the water to let in some cool air, some of this cool Atlantic sea breeze on this beautiful day in the southwest Atlantic. The seas were so easy that there was very little chance of the Gemini 6 spacecraft swamping with its hatches open while it was away from the ship. But now as the ship draws alongside, to bring it aboard by crane, the ideal way for recovery of the Gemini 6 spacecraft, with, of course, the astronauts inside. The hatches are being closed. That's so the ship, which is coming up to windward of the spacecraft, to offer it some lee in case uh, there is a bit of wind and to help some of the running seas stay off it, uh, should turn up some turbulence that could uh, uh, jostle it about in the water more than is absolutely necessary. And we've got a beautiful so view of the uh, heat damage to that uh, heat shield, the ablative shield at the bottom of the spacecraft now as uh, we come alongside. Marking the place of Gemini 6 in the water as it rides almost like a victorious gladiator on its flotation collar, the heat shield facing this way. Uh, swimmers standing on the flotation collar, their rafts afloat and tied to it. Uh, helping to guide uh, the carrier alongside. We're coming to almost dead in the water now as the Wasp's captain, Captain Gordon Hartley, executes this extremely delicate maneuver. This monstrous ship coming alongside that tiny, tiny little spacecraft riding in the water and must come alongside without a bump or a wave, and yet it's got to come alongside so close that a line can easily be fired from the number three flight elevator that's in its down position. 
I'd like to see some of those Sunday motorboat jockeys that come alongside the spacecraft out there. Rolled out. A red carpet that has seen duty aboard the Wasp before. It was the carpet uh, that uh, Gemini 4 astronauts McDivitt and White walked upon when they were recovered by this ship earlier this year. And that carpet, incidentally, on its reverse side has the maker's slogan, which is heavenly carpets. Uh, something of an apt description for the service this red flock carpet has seen. The microphones are set up. The rope handlers are ready. The marine guard is there. The sailors forming ranks of side boys on both sides. Reporters and photography is expectant. And now the wasp is coming up even closer on Gemini 6. And we see the second raft, uh, the swimmer's raft, uh, with the R&R &R section attached to it. That R&R &R section weighs about 300 pounds. It's 42 feet long. Uh, 42 inches long, rather, and it's a section that is jettisoned from the Gemini spacecraft when the main chute is deployed at just less than 10,000 feet. And it's that section that contains the rendezvous radar equipment, the equipment that allowed Gemini 6 to come within, as I said before, kissing distance of Gemini 7 up there in orbit. And right now, the Gemini 6 spacecraft on its flotation collar orange swimmer's raft tied to it. Uh, two swimmers standing on the flotation collar, one in the water in case the lifeline from the wasp should go astray. The green dye marker is still trailing it beautifully and brilliantly in the water. And she's coming up, we're almost midships. We're in the very last few seconds of this extremely tricky business of spacecraft recovery at sea. Two other swimmers just about 20 feet away from the Gemini spacecraft riding on its collar with another rubber raft and attached to that the R&R &R section that was particularly wanted by NASA on this flight. That's one thing they really did want to recover. You see and the frogman just a moment ago using that orange telephone that Lieutenant Eberly, there he is. Yeah, he's talking to uh, the uh, pilots in the, in the spacecraft and they're looking in the window at the on that side of the spacecraft they'd be looking in at Stafford we're, uh, we're coming up very slowly now on the spacecraft uh, the markers uh, the smoke markers are off several hundred yards off the starboard side and it's a colorful scene now uh, the bright yellow flotation collar attached around the spacecraft with the swimmers standing on the collar alongside it, the orange life raft Trailing off from the uh, narrow end of the spacecraft is the green fluorescein dye marker. And just a few yards away is the flotation collar, uh, 42 inches long, weighing 300 pounds, which was recovered from GT-6 just as it was in GT-2. The reason it was recovered, not only that the swimmers jumped to it in a hurry, but also because this one has a flotation device in it. They are very anxious to uh, look at this R and R section because it contains the rendezvous radar. This uh, this man is firing a uh, uh, gun that fires a line across uh, to the spacecraft. I assume that that's that that's the gun. Yes, he just fired it. Perhaps in the background you heard uh, an explosion. Carries that a line. was the line gun firing the line out to the spacecraft. It fired directly over with a beautiful shot. They have the line aboard. And now the Three swimmers are hauling the line in. He's got a thin line, hardly bigger than a string, uh, which it then pulls over the heavier line. Drawn alongside the carrier. The carrier is now dead in the water. Just about dead. It's probably moving at uh, just a couple of knots. We we'll see him a moment ago pull the heavy line in. That's Jack Kennedy. There he is. There's the heavy line. Recognize him correctly. He's standing there with his, uh, with his uh, swim gear on, hauling the heavier line out. He's leaning against the spacecraft. Now another one of them is, um, is up standing alongside him as the third swimmer in the water. And a few yards away is the uh, other life raft with three swimmers on that. They're the ones who jumped and recovered the R&R &R section. That's riding easily on the water with the aid of his flotation device. They snap the line onto the strap. 